And next up, the Ulster Unionist Party. Well, again, go on clipping to try and keep it as short as possible. Three things. One, I think it shows the power of picking your battles. Uh, in this case, um, going in with the DUP to do a pact, um, paid off handsomely in Fermanagh South Tyrone. Uh, it all, and it paid off fairly well with the DUP in East Belfast, though you wouldn't have thought that the, um, the, the, the Ulster Unionist Party had anything to do with that. There was no mention of them in the, the speech in East Belfast. Uh, so pick your battles, I think, is one thing. I also think that, that it, there's a reward here, I think, for Mike Nesbitt's more urbane, less on it um, form of leadership. So that you had the Social Conservative running in from outside to Rome, which suits that uh, rural west and south uh, base where the party is probably at its healthiest. Uh, but also in the, in the shape of Danny Kennehan, a social progressive um, in the east of the country, uh, benefiting somewhat ironically uh, from the the the. the the focus that the Alliance Party brought this time on this whole business of liberalism versus um, conservatism in social matters. Um, and whilst the Alliance Party did well, uh, it seems that uh, in South Antrim it was a straight swap for a social conservative, for a social liberal. And it, they nearly pulled the same trick off in Upper Band. So that, that's one uh, that's really interesting because in some respects that has effects way beyond the Ulster Unionist Party itself. So in Upper Band, I think David Simpson, as a social arch social conservative in a way, has been put on notice that um, that seat is now very competitive um, and that um, unlike the Assembly, he can't be just taken down and somebody else put in his place. He's going to have to fight that seat again, and you can be very sure uh, with this pick your battle strategy that uh, Mike Nesbitt and the Ulster Unionist Party are going to spend a lot of time between now and the next general election, possibly in 2020, uh, preparing a much more aggressive and a much more focused campaign for that. So I think all in all, uh, building on the progress from last year's council election, um, I also think that probably from this we might also take that um, that that the pact probably has worked um, much against the, um, the 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 wisdom or the the mores if you like of the of the the media that this is a wrong thing to do it does seem to have paid off the real question is can Mike Nesbitt get something back in Belfast um, or is that a ship that's already sailed uh, it's okay being strong in the countryside. But if you can't have representatives in Belfast, then um, you simply you're talking about what uh, six and six, twenty four, twenty four seats altogether. Yes, Just, um, and with the possibility of boundary changes coming up and maybe uh, four becoming three, that's uh, that's something that's something that will need some urgent consideration. But uh, again more of a feel-good factor. Uh, I think Nesbitt's the dark horse in all of this. Many of us, myself included, uh, have sometimes been rather too dismissive of his leadership. But uh, again, a good day's work, not simply on his own terms, he stepped out of this one um, and, um, and, and let his, his band of merry men and women um, carry the flag on this one. But, but I think a good day's work, and he and, he and his party must be... Uh, very pleased with the result.